Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. How many you know God is worthy to be praised on this day? Jesus rose on this day and we're here to celebrate and give God some praise because he's good, he's worthy, he's kind, he has all the power in his hands. Our, um, our call to worship this morning comes from Matthew 28, standing all over the room if you can comes from Matthew 28 and 5. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. Say it with me. He is not here. He is risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. I welcome you to Elaton Missionary Baptist Church, whether you're viewing online or in the sanctuary. We are here to worship a risen king and give him glory. So if you want to dance, if you want to shout, if you want to run, feel free because he's worthy to be praised. Welcome, welcome, welcome. everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Our scripture this morning comes from Matthew, the 28th chapter, verse 6. Very familiar passage. It simply says, he is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Again, our scripture this morning is Matthew, the 28th chapter, verse 6. Let us pray. Father God, we just come to you as humble as we know how this morning, just thanking and praising your name. Father God, you knew we needed a Savior, and you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Father God, we just thank you for his love that allowed him to stay up on the cross, Lord Jesus, and he died. He died. But you know what? He didn't stay dead. And we just say hallelujah this morning because he risen. He is risen just as he said. So Father God, we just thank you. We, we ask that you bless this service. Father God, we bless your name. Your name, Lord. Father God, we thank you for everyone that is here worshiping today, those that are worshiping online, those that are on their way. Those that are unable to make it but will, will, is thinking of you this morning for what you've done, sending your son Jesus. Father God, I don't know what it took for everyone to get here, Father God, but you do. And I'm just thankful to see all of your people here worshiping on one accord. So Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. So, Father God, as your word goes forth today, Father God, I pray that you unstop deaf ears. Lord Jesus, that your, that your word will penetrate hearts today, Lord Jesus. 
for those that are unsaved, Lord, that they will, they will cry out and say, what must I do to be saved? Yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask this in your son Jesus' name. We do pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's spotty week to be Easter Sunday. He arose. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He arose. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate. Hallelujah. How many know we got a reason to celebrate today? Magnify his holy name. Let all God's people now proclaim. He is risen. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Hey, let's celebrate. Lift him up and give him praise. Magnify his holy name. Let all God's people now proclaim. He is risen. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Hey. Let's celebrate. How many of you know he lives today? He is not dead. He is risen and he lives. Hallelujah. Say he lives. He lives. Hallelujah. He lives. Say he lives. He lives. Hallelujah. He lives. Stretch him wide, he hung his head. For me, he died, but that's not how the story is. Cause three days later, say three days later, say three days later, three days later, and he got up and he lives. He lives, he lives, hallelujah. He lives, he lives. He lives, hallelujah, he lives, let's celebrate that he lives, he lives, he lives, let's celebrate, let's celebrate, let's celebrate, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate that he lives. Let's celebrate. Come on, soprano, say it. Let's celebrate. Hey, altos, can you celebrate? Yeah. Come on, let's celebrate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's celebrate. Can we celebrate? Oh, I want to celebrate. 
Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Come on, let's celebrate that he lives. Let's celebrate that he lives. I said celebrate. I didn't say pity, Pat. Somebody ought to celebrate that he died one Friday, but he didn't stay in the grave. That he got up early Sunday morning. I got some folk online that know that he lives. How do I know that he lives? Because he lives within me. Somebody ought to stand on your feet. You ought to celebrate. You ought to thank God for waking you up this morning. You ought to celebrate that he lives. Oh, he lives. your glory that's what I'm talking about celebrate the fact that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life he came to die for your sins and mine but I can celebrate that he just didn't stay in the grave that he got up with all power in his hand and never to die again. That's what we're celebrating. And that same resurrection is coming your way. Yeah, you'll die, but one day you'll be resurrected and never to die again. Come on, we celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Greetings, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, the risen Christ, to all of those who are in the sanctuary, those who are online and on our call to worship line. We just thank God for your presence on today. I want you to stand all over the sanctuary, greet each other in love, tell somebody happy Resurrection Sunday. Tell them it's good to worship with you. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Amen. And amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And uh, listen, this is the, the highlight of the Christian calendar. Resurrection Sunday. We call it Easter Sunday, but it's Resurrection Sunday. And we are so grateful that all over the world on this particular Sunday, all Christians are celebrating the fact that Jesus Christ got up from the grave, got up from death. Oh, death, oh, death, oh, death. Where is your victory? Oh, grave, where is your sting? Hallelujah, we have life in him. And to share that message with us today is Kingdom's Kids. And I want you to receive them now as they come. Our children of Kingdom's Kid as they come. All right, let's go. All right, all right. Good morning, church. As you can see from our sign, this, uh, our play today is the story of the empty tomb. 
Jesus had died on the cross just a few days earlier. All of his family and friends were sad. After he died, he had been buried in a tomb. His family and friends missed him very much. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene and some of the other women went to the tomb and saw that the, tomb, that the stone had been rolled away. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she cried, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They, they asked, asked her, woman, why are you crying? I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was, thinking he was the gardener, Mary said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. If you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, now Mary recognized him. It was Jesus. He was alive. Mary Magdalene ran to the disciples the news, I have seen the Lord. Lord. I have seen the Lord. Mary ran to the disciples and said, I have seen the Lord. Now all the Jesus friends and family were happy and said, all right good morning so that was our priest pre-kindergarten to second grade. <laughs> All right, so now we are gonna have our third, fourth, and fifth grade. All right, the empty tomb is in the background. Oh, I don't want to read that part. <laughs> Not that part, okay. So, follow Mary Magdalene on her way to the tomb of Jesus early on Easter Sunday morning. See her surprise at finding the empty tomb. Mary runs to find the disciples and tell John and Simon Peter what had happened. They run to the tomb only to find it empty, as Mary said. Where is Jesus' body? Soon they all learn the wonderful truth that Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Jesus had died on the cross just a few days earlier, and after he died, he was buried in a tomb. His family and friends were very sad. His family and friends missed him very much. 
Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene and some other women went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away. This astonished them, but there were something even more astonishing. The body of Jesus was not in the tomb. They have taken the Lord out of his tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Simon Peter and John started for the tomb. Both were running, but John outran Simon Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked at the stripes of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the stripes of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still laying in this place, separate from the lining. Finally, John, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed, but they did still not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, then saw two angels in white seated there where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the other foot. At this, Mary turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus yet. She thought perhaps the man she saw was the gardener. Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Mary. Teacher. Do not hold on to me, for I have yet not yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers instead and tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them all the things he had said to her. Now Jesus' friends didn't have to be sad anymore. Now they knew that Jesus was alive forever. Jesus, Jesus is, is alive. alive. Happy Easter. All right, you can see that our focus, the different perspectives, if you, you notice the gospel, everybody gives their different perspective of what happened. Yeah. And so our different age groups give, is given the same account, but a different perspective. Um, our middle school students are coming. All right. All right, so as they're getting settled. Okay. Okay. Have a seat. 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 Have a seat.
At this time, our middle school students will present a skit entitled, The Bunny Tells the Meaning of Easter. The Bunny Tells the Meaning of Easter. Please welcome Autumn, which is our narrator, Cameron, our second narrator. Raphael is our unhappy kid. And our hippity hoppity Easter Bunny will be played by none other than Naraya. And she's skip around and give a little of your candy out real quick. <laughs> hippity hoppity, give some of your candy away. <laughs> she don't she don't. She don't dropped her phone. Okay, and as she hippity hoppity back to her don't give all the candy away. <laughs> okay, now our skit will begin. Go ahead. This is a story about the Easter Bunny that hippity poppity pal of children everywhere who delivers eggs and chocolate bunnies to good boys and girls around the world every year. Once upon a time, as Easter bro morning broke over the Western Hemisphere, the Easter Bunny had finished his rounds and... Whoa, excuse me, his Easter Bunny is a her. Oh, my apologies, I just assumed. I know you and your patriotic view of the world assumed the Easter Bunny was a boy. Well, the Easter Bunny is a girl, so get it straight. My mistake, as I was saying, the bunny had finished hit her rounds and was making her way back to her home on bunny chair. Whoa, Miss, oh, never mind. Whoa, no giving away the Easter Bunny secret undisclosed home address. That's what got the Easter Bunny into all this mess in the first place. Indeed it was. Indeed it was, because this year, A curious young man followed the Easter Bunny home. Hey, Bunny, open up. Sorry, the Easter Bunny does not live here. So how come I saw the Easter, the Bunny stop here? Because the Easter Bunny is a friend of the person who lives here, the Tooth Fairy. The Tooth Fairy, huh? Well, open up, I need to talk to her too. Him, the two fairies, just and him, just because he's a fairy, you automatically assume. Aha, so you are the Easter Bunny. Okay, so what do you want? I want an exchange of merchandise. You see this egg? Yeah. <laughs> it's rotten. You could have just gone to the store. You followed the Easter home over a right egg? I certainly did. You could have just gone to the store. Hey, when I let a large egg distributing talking rabbit rodent into, into my house, I expect quality. Forgive the Easter bunny for saying this, but the Easter bunny thinks you're missing the point. What do you mean? Kid, the Easter Bunny brings eggs, true, and the Easter Bunny brings chocolate likeness of the Easter Bunny, but the joy and happiness, that's another fella's department, the one who really is behind the Easter celebration. And who might that be? Why, Jesus, of course. Jesus Christ. The Son of God born at Christmas time to Virgin Mary. Kia, have a seat and let the Easter Bunny enlighten to you. And so the Easter Bunny began to relate the Easter story beginning with the separation of God and the man in the Garden of Eden. The Easter Bunny explained how God so loved the world, he gave his only son as a sacrifice for the sins of the world, raising him with, from the dead and opening the way for mankind to have eternal life. 
I don't get it. If that's the meaning of Easter, where do you fit in? Easter comes around in the spring. Spring is the time of renewing of life. Eggs and the Easter bunny are a symbol of new life. All of these remind people of the new life that Jesus gives to all who believe in him. The young man considered all these things in his heart, pondering the meaning of the bunny's words. After a long pause, he finally spoke and asked, So are you going to give me a, a good egg or not? Is that all you care about? The Easter Bunny tells you the real meaning of Easter and all you want is an egg? Yes. <laughs> you got it. So the young man, stubborn and selfish, failed to experience the true meaning of Easter, but we hope that won't be the case with you. This Easter, remember the story of the foolish young man and remember the moral of the story. Find meaning in Jesus and not the big bunny, or else you'll get egg on your face, and that's not funny. That, that is runny. Y'all gonna kick, um, um, children, it's candy on the floor. Y'all gonna get that? Eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord, alive forever and ever. He is Savior of the world, the truth and the life. The life and eternal life is in Jesus raised from the dead. All right, now we will have the shyest group, which is our teenagers. <laughs> On Easter morning, Mary Magdalene and a few other women went to the tomb where Jesus had been laid. They discovered the empty tomb and an angel had told them that Jesus had been risen. When Mary Magdalene found that Jesus was alive, she went to tell the disciples. <laughs> I have seen the Lord. He is risen. He is alive. Later that day, a pair of men traveled to Emmaus, met with the stranger. They told him now... They told him how Jesus had been put to death and laid in a tomb. The man told them all this had happened just as the prophets predicted. When they stopped to eat with the stranger, their eyes were open and they realized they had been talking with Jesus. They raced back in town telling everyone who had, whom they had seen. We just saw Jesus. He is alive. Just look at the preference. Today we come together to remember that Jesus is risen. As we leave, we, like the other disciples, come to the, can take the good news in the world and tell them. Hey, how come I didn't get any eggs? What? 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 <laughs> that rowdy rabbit didn't bring me any eggs. Doesn't he know they're my favorite? Wait a minute. This is Easter morning. All you can think about is Cadbury eggs? No, that's not all. I was going to say. Didn't he? I didn't get any um, peanut butter uh, eggs either. I can't believe it. 
on this Easter morning, no one could wait to share the good news. So did we. We told everyone. So how come you're all worried about chocolate eggs? Well, it's Easter. We get chocolate eggs, and did I miss something? We beat soon. Sam, what's that? It's all the bad things that we have ever done. It's the, the bad things that separate us from God, like disobeying your parents, lying to your friends, and fighting with siblings, and taking things that don't belong. Stop it. Okay, I know I'm not perfect. So does Jesus. And that's why he died for us. And now he's alive. He's alive and has conquered sin. We are no longer separated from God if we believe in Jesus. He will forgive our sins and grant us eternal life. You mean he's forgiven us for all the bad things we've done? Yes. Who needs chocolate Easter eggs? Hey everyone. hey everyone, Jesus, Jesus is alive. alive. All right, thank you guys for participating in our skit. Um, this is our children, our kingdom's kids. Now, you saw a lot of papers. You saw a lot of papers. Um, this isn't our crowd consistently, and we, you know, ask you parents that if you can bring them, we can teach them. We can't teach if they're not here. And so our, our students, I think we've had about six students that have been here every Sunday, but you saw that this little skit took more than six. So this morning we were fumbling, getting lines together. But if you bring your children second Sunday through fourth Sunday, we are willing to teach them and so that we can participate and get them to memorize their lines. And parents, we can't, we have them one Sunday. We need you guys to help them out. They come home with papers, so just, you know, ask them what they did, ask them what they learned about. They will tell you that they learned about Jesus and, you know, we just want them to participate. Thank you. Yeah. Amen, 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 amen. Come on, let's give God praise again for our, our kingdom's kids. And I want all of the children now to come to the front of the sanctuary. I want us to take a picture together. I want to see your new uh, resurrection Easter outfits that you have on. Come on, what are y'all waiting on? Come on up here, take a picture. Come on. Wherever you are in the sanctuary, if you're under 18 years of age, come on up here. Come on up here. Parents, allow your children. Matter of fact, bring them on up here. Come on, come on. What y'all waiting on? All right. All right, Minister Goodlow, get us settled here. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, move in, move in. All right, praise God. All, all of the children, come on, come on, come on. Come on, baby G. All right, all right. Move over, come on. We got room on this side. We got room on this side. Don't they look pretty, beautiful, handsome? Come on, let's encourage them as they come. Amen, amen. All right, all right. All right, we got room on this side. We got room on this side. All right, come on down. All right. Blake, Blake, where you going, Blake? Blake, Blake, come on up here. All right. <laughs>
Amen. Come on, give our God praise for our children as they go back to their seats with their parents, their guardians. Amen. Come on, let's come on, let's give God praise for them for sharing the gospel message of Jesus Christ on today. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. I am so so proud of all of our children. We thank God for them. Thank God for Sister Kiva Adams and our youth uh, ministry as well. And we just thank God for Kingdom's Kids. And as she stated, we want to invite you to make sure that your children are a part of children's worship. That's every second, third, and fourth Sunday. And on the first Sundays, we all gather here together. So we encourage you parents and grandparents, bring your children. One more time, let's celebrate, celebrate our youth. They are the people of God for today and the promise of God for tomorrow and it's our job to prepare them today for tomorrow put those hands together it's giving time it's time for us to worship god in giving listen jesus 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 gave his his life god gave his son god has get, offered us and given us the very best in the lord in the lord jesus and what a blessing it is to be able to give and so we encourage you on today to give a resurrection offering. In other words, Jesus sacrificed. He sacrificed his life. And we're challenging you. We're encouraging you to give in a way that bespeaks your love for God and for ministry. And so we're asking that you would do that in the spirit of worship. Because giving is indeed worship. And we thank God for the opportunity to worship God in in giving. Amen. Are you ready to give? I, 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 some. Are you ready to worship God in giving? I can't hear you. Let, let, are you ready to worship God in giving? All right. Well, stand all over the sanctuary. Stand all over the sanctuary. I want you to give it a manner that bespeaks who you are. And if you haven't shared your anniversary, the 98th church anniversary gift, we ask that you would share that as well. We want you to, under the directions of the ushers from the rear of the sanctuary, come giving your tithes, your offerings, given in the spirit of worship. You can give through the mobile app, Giblify. You can also give by mailing your offerings in to Elington Missionary Baptist Church. That's P.O. Box. The P.O. Box, it's on the screen. 13219, Detroit, Michigan, 48213. Come giving in the spirit of worship, in the spirit of worship. Amen. Hallelujah.
thank God for our ushers and nurses on today. We thank God for all of our survey ministries. As we lift the Lord up, Jesus says, as I'm lifted up, I'll draw all on to me. So we thank you. Thank God for, for the Lord Jesus. Has everyone had an opportunity to give? Amen. Amen. Let us now look to the Lord in, in prayer. Eternal God, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to worship you in giving. If it had not been for you, O oh Lord, where would we be? All that we have comes from you. And we're so grateful to receive it because you live within us. We're guided by the Holy Spirit to worship you in our giving and to do so in a way, even as Jesus gave his life sacrificially and some out of plenty. But we thank you for this opportunity to give. We ask that you would bless now the gifts and the givers and do so in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank God. And all of the people of God together said amen, amen, and amen. I want you to receive the choir now as they bless us in song. We will have our altar prayer at the end of the sermon on today. And so I'm asking that you receive our, our choir now as they bless us in song. Come on, give God praise. Thank you for your faithful and obedient giving.
everybody knows that he got up. Somebody knows that he got up with all power in his hand. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb of God. He got up, he got up. Does anybody know that he got up? He got up with all power in his, in his hand. And uh, I don't know who rolled away the stone, but what I do know is he got up. And I also know that they didn't roll the stone away for Jesus to get out the tomb. They rolled the stone away so they could see that he was not there and that he got up and that he lived. Somebody ought to celebrate our living Christ, the risen Christ. Come on, put those hands together and give God some praise. We celebrate, celebrate our risen Savior. We thank God for resurrection life. Uh, in this world, we need we need resurrection life in our lives. We're so grateful and thankful for our mothers, our deaconess, our ministers, deacons, trustees, all of our serving ministries on today. We're so grateful for this wonderful choir on today. Come on, let's celebrate them. And our musicians, our, our audio sound team, we just thank God for for them audio visual team we thank God for them thank God for all of you who are gathered in the sanctuary today some of you all haven't seen since last Easter that ain't a dig that's just I'm glad to see you here come on somebody celebrate the fact that that we're here and we're so grateful we're so grateful to be here I, I see some I see a long time friend Candy Marshall is here we used to play in the band together. Come on, stand up, Candy. Let them see you. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. It's been a long time. It's so good to see you. And uh, it's just good to be in the house of the Lord one more time on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen and amen. I want to call your attention to uh, the letter of the Romans, Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. I want to look at verses 7 through 7 through 11 for your hearing Romans chapter 5 verses 6 Let's, we'll start at verse 6 verse 6 through through 11 amen and I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible uh, the Kingdom's Kids already told the story and uh, we're so grateful for that but we want to to uh, look at this text today it says these words you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And since we now have been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, Jesus. But how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Verse 8 says, but God demonstrated his own love for us. And from this, I want to talk from the subject. And I want you to hear this. The resurrection, it's a love thing. The resurrection, it's a love thing. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of, of Jesus is all about love. Yeah, yeah, that he, that, he, that he died, that he was buried, and that he was resurrected on the third day, as the scripture says. It's, it's, about, it's about love, that, that God so loved the world that he, he gave his only begotten son. He sent him here to earth that whosoever believe in his death, his burial, and his resurrection should have life, everlasting life. It, it, it's all about 
It's about love. Turn to somebody and tell them it's a love thing. And what better conversation to have on Resurrection Sunday but about love. God's love for, for humankind. Listen, Resurrection Sunday, it, 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 it's, it, it's, it's not about the clothes we wear. No, it, it, it's not about the actual day. No, it, it, it's not about a bunny. It's not about chocolate candy. It's not about eggs. It's about love. It's about God's love for humankind that he would send his son to die. But not only die, but to be resurrected from the dead. And this is what I need you to get. Never to die again. And listen, if you believe that, my brothers and sisters, God says if you believe that with all your heart, if you confess Jesus as Lord, you shall be saved. You have eternal life. In other words, God is saying, yeah, you're going to die physically. But when Jesus comes back, he's going to resurrect you physically with a glorified body, never, never to die again. What a, what, what a wonderful gift. Isn't that love? And God would send his own son to, to die for you and for me, that we can have peace with God, that, that we can face tomorrow with hope. Because if he can get up from the dead and never to die again, that means we got hope for tomorrow. Because who holds tomorrow in, in his hand? And I, I, I wanted us to talk about, I want us to talk about this. Because it's not just about love that God has for us, but it's the love that God has placed in our heart that we can have love for one another. Yeah, it's about a relationship with God. He reconciled himself to us so that he could teach us how to love. This is a love thing. It's a heart matter that we can love one another. And listen, if you're going to live the resurrection and live a le resurrection life, you, you got to have love. Yeah, yeah. Not just for, for God, but you got to have love for, for what's... Why don't you lean over and tell somebody you love them? You know, I, I, I grew up in a, in a time in an era where, where men didn't use that word love. You know, my, my father struggled was saying, I love you. Somebody need to turn to somebody. You ain't, I, I know you might be upset with them. I, I know you might have some issues with them. I, I know you might not even like them, but you need to turn to them right now and say, I love you. Tell your children, I, I love you. Tell, tell somebody, tell a stranger, tell them I love you. Make them look you in the face. I love you too. I love, I love you. I love you. This is a love thing. Jesus died, but he got up in love that we can love God and love one, love one another. And, and oftentimes, my brothers and sisters, we miss the fact that to live a resurrected life with Christ, we got to love one another. Because of the love of Christ is in, a, in, in, a, in our heart. Wouldn't we live, a, wouldn't this be a better world if we had love? And listen, it starts right here at the church of God. Yeah, it starts right here and it should spread to our, to our families and to our neighborhoods and to our community, even to our world. Can't you hear Jesus saying, love one another like I love you. You should love one another. Then the world will know that you're my disciples. By, by your love. How are you going to come to church on Sunday and mad at, at, at somebody sitting next to you? How, how, how are you going to say you love Christ? How are you going to say you love God who you have not seen but hate your brother and sister you see every day? Well, the Bible says that you are a liar and the truth is not in you. Pastor Miller didn't call you a liar. I didn't call you a liar. The Bible says this is, a, this is a love thing. This is a love thing. You know, 
love that's brought alive in, in, in our hearts. And that's, that's what Paul is writing uh, to the church in, in, in Rome. He, he's, saying, he's saying, listen, just, just at the right time. And that's the one I want to do. I just want to just kind of just dip into this text that we have today and, and, and expound on it. And, and in verse 6, he said, you see, it's just at the right time. And, and see, what, what he's doing is teaching us how to live a resurrected life with love. At the right time, it said, just at the right time, when we were powerless. We were powerless. Just at the right time. We didn't have no power. No power over sin. No, no power to love. No, no power to forgive. No power to have a relationship with God. No power to have a real, a genuine relationship with the another. Just at the right time. Rex at the right moment. Love prevails. It says that when we were powerless, oh hallelujah, Christ died for us. Yeah, yeah. Speak, Spirit. If you have a, 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 a hear, a ear, hear what the Spirit of the Lord said. Why we were, yeah, the ungodly. He died for. That's love. Just at the right time. And, and see, that's the thing about love, my brothers and sisters. When you feel powerless. When people have hurt you, when, when people have sinned against you, when you sin against them, when you can't forgive, the love of Christ, the resurrected love of Christ that's in your heart will, will bubble up out your heart and give you the power, power to love, power, power, to, power to love, just at the right time. And, and, and you know every now and then something will happen in our life and we need that just at the right time moment. When somebody, yeah, yeah, misabuse you and, and use you when they falsely accuse you. Yeah, when, when you have, a, you know, a difficulty and conversation with somebody else, but just at the right time, God will send his love. I'm talking about resurrected love. Yeah. That'll guide your heart, that'll guide your mind, that'll control your mouth. That's what love, love, I'm talking about, I'm talking about love. This is a love thing. He, he was resurrected so that we can have the right relationship with God and with others. He says he died for the ungodly. In other words, Jesus sacrificed. And see, that's what love does. Love, love sacrifices. Love gives and keeps on giving. Love, even though he died, love never died. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody ought to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And, and then Paul makes this, makes this remark. He said, now, now, now rarely will anyone, you know, die for the righteous person. And see, a righteous person is that person who is in right standing with God and with one another. And he said, it rarely would, would people even die for a righteous person. Yeah. And then he goes on, uh, go on, on, goes on and said, though for a good person, somebody might possibly dare to die. For a good person, a person that has good morals but no relationship with God. Yeah, yeah a person that, that may treat you nice and, and treat each other nice, but they have no relationship with God. They're, they're not in right standing with God. And if you're not in right standing with God, you cannot be in right standing with your brother. He said they may die for, for a good person, but they ain't going to die for one who is righteous. It's in right standing with God. You see, this is all based on selfishness. I ain't going to die for them. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to sacrifice because this thing is about me. And see, can I, can I, can I, can I just say this, that, that love is, is not a me thing. Love is for, for everybody. Love goes beyond me. Love goes beyond selfishness. And see, Jesus learned to subdue the divine autonomy of self and submit to the perfect will of God for his life. That's why he died for the ungodly. Can't you hear Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane saying, Father, can this cup be removed? Can we do this another way? Do I have to die for these folk that don't love you, don't love me? Do I have to die for them? Can we do it another way? Pray that prayer three times. But he love removed the selfishness. And, and, and he said, not my will, but that your will will be done. You see, that's what love is. Yeah, putting your will aside for the highest good of somebody else. 
And when we live the resurrected life, it allows us the love of God to put my will aside. This ain't about me, but I want the very best for you. And the only way I can give you that is through love. Through, through love. He died for the ungodly. We get upset with folk. Won't talk to them. Avoid them. Yeah, talk about them. Start gossiping about them. Aren't you glad about God's love? That all the while we were sinners, God died for the ungodly. He sacrificed his son. He, that, that's worth celebrating. That's love. That's why we come here today to celebrate the love of God. So somebody, somebody ought to just thank him right now. Thank you for, for loving me. Thank you for not loving like, like we love one another. But thank you for loving with a God kind of love. Thank you for loving me when I'm unlovable. Thank you for loving me when I'm, I'm hateful. Thank you for loving me when I'm wrong. Thank you, God, for, for, for keep on loving me while we were yet still sinner. He died for the ungodly. Oh, I celebrate the fact that, that Jesus would come to 42 generations to die for the, un, for the un, ungodly. This is, this is a love thing. This is a love thing. And so after Paul said, look, folk won't even die for, 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 you know, for the righteous. They, they may. It, it, it might be possible. But then he says, but God. Somebody say, but God. In verse 8, he says, but God demonstrated his own love. Yeah, not, not our love. Not, not a fake love. Not, no, not, not a sometimes love, but a divine agape love. A God love that has no limits, that has no boundaries, that, that's not based on conditions. Somebody ought to celebrate the fact that God demonstrates his love. And you know, we, we do a whole lot of love talking. I love you, brother. I love, I, I love you, sister. Talk is cheap if you can't demonstrate your love. Don't tell me you love me, but treat me any kind of way. Don't, don't tell me you love me on Sunday, but you don't love me on Monday. Come on. Don't, don't tell me you love me, but you don't do nothing to help me. Don't tell me you love me when you don't care about me, have no compassion about me. Don't tell me you love me. When you gossip about me, don't, don't tell me you love me when you can't forgive me. Don't tell me that you, you got to, de God demonstrated his love. He showed his love. He gave his son while we were yet still sinner. That, that, that's, this, this is a love thing. This, this is a love thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, we were on our way, destined to hell and the, and the grave, but yet he died for us. That, that's love. He gave his own son, his only son. God himself in the person of Jesus Christ put on human flesh to pay the penalty for our sins. Oh, that's love. It's love. God, God demonstrated his, his, his love. And, and if we're going to live the resurrected life, we have to demonstrate love. You know? Love is, is not only seeing a need, but it's meeting a need. <laughs> yeah, L love is not just saying I love you, but demonstrating your love. Somebody, some, some, somebody, you know, may need a hug right now. You know, sometimes we say we love you from afar, but sometimes a hug make you feel the love that comes from a person's heart Some, sometime holding on a, somebody's hand and looking them in the eyes and saying I love you that, that's what Christ demonstrated that's what God demonstrated he demonstrated his love by looking at all of humanity in his evilness and in his, in his filthiness and said but I love you and I'm going to send you my son to die for the ungodly oh this is a love this is a love thing. This is a love. This is a love thing. He, he demonstrates his love. And, and I love the fact he says, while we were yet still sinners. 
He, Deacon Drake, he didn't, he didn't send his son to die. He didn't demonstrate his love once we got ourselves together. You know, and sometimes that's what I hear, you know, well, Pastor, you know, Reverend, I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come on back to church. I'm going to come to church when I get myself together. Listen, if you could have got yourself together, you'd have did it a long time ago. And that's why we come to church so that we can get together and get ourselves together by being meeting Jesus in the sanctuary that he can heal us of our wound and our hurt so that we can love one another like Christ. It's the love of God that heals us. You know, I've heard people say, you know, well, you know, I, I don't go to church because church people, they do that, you know, yeah, that's some of the worst hurt in the world. Well, that's why we're here because we all hurt and we're trying to get healed of our hurt. And hurt people hurt people and you done hurt some people too. So stop acting like you the only one getting hurt because you done hurt somebody yourself. Am I talking to anybody up in here? But love. The love. I, I, I keep telling y'all that. I got to tell you again. Uh, Lady Di and I had the boys over four of our of our 14 grandchildren, but we had four of the boys over. Mom and dad went out and needed some, some you know, some, some alone time. They went out of town. We had them for the weekend. They picking and fighting at each other. You know, they, they, they who he cussed. And, and, and this one say, oh, yeah, yeah, he hit me. Yeah, you sit over there and you be quiet. He looking at me. Yeah, he won't help me. You know, he, 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 he always messing with me. Ah, oh, Papa, he took my candy, you know, and, and, and I, I just got fed up. And I said, I said, why do y'all, after all, me and your granny and your mom and there, we pray for you, we lay hands on you, we teach you to buy, we try, you try, we try to love you. Why do y'all keep on doing what you do? Why do you treat each other like that? And one of my grandsons looked at me like poor man, and he just threw his hands up in the air and said, that's what we do. That, that's what we do. That's what we do. And, 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 and listen, that's, 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 that's what we do. But you know, when I was a child, I act like a child. I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. But hallelujah, when I got the love of Christ in my heart, I put away childish things. And the love of God allowed me to demonstrate my love. This is a love thing. We got to mature in Christ Jesus and love one another if we're going to live the resurrected love in, in our heart. Says, since we were justified by his blood, verse 9, how, how much shall we be saved from the wrath of God? You see, that's love. That, see, see, the wrath of God, because the penalties of, of sin is death. Yeah. That's the wrath of God. But because of Jesus Christ died, he removed the wrath, and we have peace with God. Not only the peace that we're at peace with God, but that there's a peace that God gives us with inside. A peace that when we're hurting, a peace that when we're struggling, a peace and a comfort in our heart. And he removes that, that, that wrath of God by the love because it comes through, through him. And then Paul makes the argument, he says, for if, 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 if while we were God's enemy, we were reconciled. In other words, this is about a relationship. He wanted to have a relationship with you and a relationship with me. He wanted us to, to be reconciled, to have genuine, authentic, loving relationships with one another. And so we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. You see, the death penalty that Christ paid wipes away our sins. It provides forgiveness and justification for God to forgive us and to love us. Because my son, who is righteous, took on your sins, who are sinful, he then I justify. Because when I look at you, I'm looking through the body of Christ. Because when you accept Jesus as your savior, you are then placed into the body of Christ. And so when Jesus looks at us, he looks at us. When God looks at us, he looks at us through the body of Christ. He don't see you. He don't see me. He sees his son, Jesus, the righteous one. He sees love. And that's what we ought to see. When you see your brother and your sister, no matter who they are in life, no matter what their gender preference is, no, no matter what, what their orientation, gender, or orienta no matter who they are in Christ, no matter the color of their skin, no, no matter if they're male or female, when you see another human being, you ought to see Christ. 
Then we can love one another. But, but he said that happened in his death. But he says, how much more having been reconciled? So now we're reconciled. We're in right relationship. Shall we be saved through his life? Yeah, he died. Oh, hallelujah. And that's a wonderful thing. But glory to the Lamb of God. When he got up. <laughs> When he got up, the choir, yeah, I don't know who rolled away the stone, the choir said, but I know that he got up and that he lives, and he lives. How do I know that he lived? Because he walks with me. He, 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 he talks to me. He walks with me. Then the now he imparts salvation onto me. How do I know he lived? Because he lives in my heart. Yeah, he's resurrected in my heart. He's alive in my heart. Yes, he died one Friday. <laughs> But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. It was love that got him up. Hallelujah. It was love. It's a love thing. He got up with power in his hand. The power to love right. It was love. Somebody tell somebody. High five somebody. Put in the comment section. It's a love thing. The resurrection of Christ is a love thing. Right now. Now is the right time to love while yet uh, you still got enemies uh, yet uh, you dealing with evil folk uh, but right now is the time to love it's a love thing if God didn't love us if God didn't love you if God didn't love me if Christ didn't love us if the Holy Spirit of God didn't love us Jesus if he would not have been the God that he is with divine love he would have stayed in the grave but divine love can lift up dead things divine love can bring relationships back together divine love can heal hurt divine love can heal your bodies divine love can forgive I'm talking about the resurrection love it's a love thing it's a love thing and to love with a love thing to live a resurrected life of Christ you got to believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and that he was resurrected from the dead. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart. And so we extend an invitation to make Christ your Savior. There may be someone here that has not accepted Jesus as your Lord. If you would all stand for those who can. Make your way down this aisle and, and experience the divine love, true love of Jesus Christ. If you don't know him in the pardons of your sin, come, come and know him. He already died for you. You need to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And that he's alive, that he lives within our, our hearts, not just on the pages of the Bible, but, but he lives in our heart. And because he lives, we can, we can face tomorrow because whose hand the future is. And so we extend that invitation to make Christ the Savior of your life. If you're online, text your name to join at elantonmbc.org. The doors of the church is open. Will there be one? Will you come? Maybe you say, but you don't have a church home. Come on. Join with either the Missionary Baptist Church and experience the love of God. Well, we offer God our very best. Hallelujah. Have a seat, my brother. There's no name like me that's love. I'm talking about authentic love. That's love. Will you come? Save the wretch like me, that's love. That's love. Will there be another? Will you come? They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He died. Yes, 
to do. That's love, divine love. Will you come? Candidates of baptism, come. Hung his head. That's love, that's love. But that ain't how the story is. Oh, no, 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 no. Glory to the Lamb of God. That's love, that's love. Would that be another when you come? Amen. God bless you. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. We have had one who has come, and I know he's coming on Christian experience. And he comes on Christian experience to become a member of Elijah Missionary Baptist Church. Dr. Kurt Gitlow. Amen. And so listen, we are elated. You're already family, but you're really now family and part of our ministerial staff here. And we thank God for you. Come on, let's celebrate Dr. Goodlow. He is coming. And that's his beautiful wife. Minister Goodlow standing behind him. All right, all right. Praise God. Praise God. Let's all stand for those who can for a word of prayer. And then we will give the benediction on today. I want to give a shout out to uh, the Collins, Deacon Collins and Sister Collins as they celebrate their 51st wedding anniversary. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let's, let's look to the Lord in, in prayer. If you don't mind, join hands. Reach between the aisles. Let's just join hands if you don't mind. <clears throat> in unity, in you know, one accord, let us, let us pray. Eternal God, how we love you. And we thank you for loving us when we're not so lovable. We thank you for demonstrating your love toward us that we might love one another. Thank you for the love in our hearts. And even times, God, we, we miss the mark. and We fail to love like you told us to love. Our, our feelings get hurt. And sometimes, God, we do what we do because that's what we do. But oh, hallelujah, God, we thank you for the Spirit of God who bless us with your divine love. Thank you, Jesus, for coming and dying. Thank you for, for getting up early Sunday morning. Now we pray now in the name of Jesus that you arise up in us, for us, with love, in love, for love, that we can be all that you called us to be. We pray for divine healing in the name of Jesus. Even right now, we pray for your divine comfort and, and counsel. Even right now, for those who've lost loved ones, for those who are even grieved and losing and not being here on Resurrection Sunday with their loved ones. God, we, we pray, oh God, that you would make a way out of no way as you've done before. We know that you can do it because there's somebody here that needs to make a decision and needs to hear from you on today. A decision how to love, a decision how to make uh, forgiveness, a, a decision what which way to, to turn, God. Help us, lead us, guide us, direct us with your love. And God, we ask that the love of Jesus, that you would open up your hem of your garments, even right now, and pour out and meet us at our greatest need. We need you right now. We need your divine love right now. We, we need healing right now. We need forgiveness right now. We need power right now. The power of love. We need it right now, God, in our lives. We need encouragement. And we know that you got it. And that you demonstrate it. So speak, Holy Spirit. Speak to our heart. Speak to our mind. Speak to our souls. And we'll be careful to always give you the praise. The honor and the glory in Jesus name we thank you for rising from the dead in Jesus name we we thank you that you live in Jesus name we thank you that we have hope and peace in Jesus name we thank you that we can face tomorrow this is our prayer we pray it in the mighty matchless majestic name of our risen Savior Jesus the Christ and the people of God together said amen, amen. 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 Now for our benediction, heads raised and eyes wide open. Thou may the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the sweet, blessed communion of the Holy Spirit 
rest, rule, and abide with you on this Resurrection Sunday. And when you lie down tonight and wake up early Monday morning, whether it's a day of labor or a day of leisure, whether you feel good or you don't feel so well at all, whether things are going your way or not, whether somebody treats you bad or not, may God's grace yes. undergird you to support you, cover you to protect you, shield you, and surround you and bless and keep you with a divine love that will allow you to love like Jesus loved. Now henceforth and forever, because this is a love thing. And the people of God said together, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God keep you. Here's our prayer. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Be blessed and love somebody with a love thing. Thank you, Welcome.